It was an interesting era when I came here with Laszlo, you know, uh, the people who started to come up, Americans as well, you know, like Conrad Hall, Haskell Wexler, Owen Roisman, all these people grew up into an era which we call it the, the American New Wave. And that was basically um, a new direction to make movies. And then the younger directors who came up in those days, you know, like Altman, Brian De Palma, or, you know, Bogdanovich, and all these people wanted different looking uh, American movies because they, they loved the European kind of movies. The European movies looked different. They were simple, they were uh, down to earth. And then sweeping up the jokers that he left behind, you find he did not leave you very much, not even laughter. Most of my movies, like, you know, 99% of my movies were about real things. We had some poetry into it. And I would rather, you know, call the style, what I like the best is the, the poetic realism, which is based on reality, but it's, it's a sort of more poetic, more like, uh, like the painters used to do, you know, the Rembrandt, Caravaggio, uh, the Dutch masters, George de Latour. I mean, they are really real, but it's almost like super real. Two of spades, seven of diamonds, eight of spades, jack of spades, three of hearts. It has poetry in it. Okay, my friend. Jack off. <laughs> <laughs> And most of the directors fall for that style anyhow, because that's, that's a beautiful style. Robert is a great director, I mean, very creative. And Warren Beatty actually was also up in his career, you know. He, he they didn't want to do just an other movie. They wanted to make this a better movie than it was written. So they, they kept writing the script you know, every night, you know. So I didn't know what we are going to be shooting the next day each time. but. It was fun to work because it was all improvised. So I would ask uh, Robert, what are we shooting tomorrow? He said, I don't know, but I will tell you in the morning. I said, I said, I cannot prep anything yet. You can't even tell me which part of the set we are going to be shooting, because we were in Vancouver with a big set, you know, exterior set, a lot of houses built and all that. I said, no, 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 I, I, I will tell you tomorrow, don't worry. So they went back with Warren that night and wrote in that part of the screenplay, which was the next phase, you know. It was actually written day by day by day by day, you know, like that. I go walk up next morning to Robert. Said, Robert, where are we shooting? Where are we are shooting here in, uh, inside of this building. I said, Robert, we don't have cables yet there, and this will take time, and you know, and, uh, but how long is it going to take? Oh, a couple of hours, three hours. I said, fine, no problem. Just Go ahead, start it. I mean, not in a hurry. <laughs> so that's what the whole movie was like that. I mean, I never never expected anything like that, that, you know, I will have all the time to do this. Like he wanted Laszlo to shoot it because Laszlo shot a movie with him before the cold day in a park. And uh, Laszlo could not do it because he was busy, but he told Robert, take Wilmos, Wilmos is better than I am. We use this tactic between the two of us always, you know, because if I was busy, I could not do something. I said, listen, I have a friend who is better than I am. You should take Laszlo Kovács. He did easy rise. You will be very happy with him. You will never even think about me. So that's how we built each other's career this way all the time, you know, because we pushed each other ahead, not working against each other like many people would do that, you know. We didn't have a jealousy about, among, between us, you know, ever. We helped each other always. And then taking from his wallet an old schedule of trains, he said. It was actually never shot a movie that way, you know, to deliberately destroy the film, the quality of the, of the film to the point that it looks like an old antique image, which could have been shot in those days when they, it was no film yet. So this, this was the whole idea. And, then, and uh, I thought it was a brilliant idea from Robert. I was a little bit scared, you know, the beginning that uh, you have to have some quality to that. Otherwise, uh, 
it will look like bad, and it will look like a bad document or something like that, you know. Flashing basically came to my attention when, when I saw a movie, but Freddie Young shot uh, in, in London, The Deadly Affair. And I saw those beautiful desaturated images, which I always was trying, you know, to do in color film, you know, to, to desaturate images so they, they are closer to black and white. And in, in those days, we, we, we could not really do it unless, it, unless every, every, the whole movie became an optical and that would be very costly. So when I saw that movie of uh, Fred Young, I decided to make some tests. And just luckily, you know, Robert Altman was preparing to make McCabe and Mrs. Miller. And I said, I have the right answer to this, how to do this. I think that maybe this will do. Stand up, take a talk. You've got to take your mind off it, think of something else. Basically, yeah? the flashing technique is just that what we are doing is exposing 5%, 10%, or 20% layer of light, pure white light, in, into the negative before you shoot up. Or you can also do it after you shut up. Now, what it does actually, it takes the colors out a little bit, so it desaturates it. And it's if you play it a little bit darker, what we did in the back of Mrs. Miller, we had this very wonderful effect actually that the sequences don't look as colorful as those movies. Technicolor colors, you know, look always too bright, too colorful, too unreal. I tried occasionally to be a little bit more sharp and more better, you know, uh, in, in quality. And then he called me all the time in the dailies. He said, well, much this doesn't look like the day earlier way, what, what we shot the other scene. And then and I said, well, I think because I used, used a little more exposure, which is true, if I used a little more of an exposure, the flashing reacted a little bit less in the film. Then he told me, okay, well, much now for this final sequence, we can go a little bit sharper. We can go a little bit more dramatic. We can take it away a little bit from this dreamy quality, you know, and then make it more real because that's very dramatic, you know. The Warren Beatty's character dies and all that, so we can. And that's what we did, basically. So we, we had a good balance, you know. At the end, we showed, actually, more sharpness and more dramatic, you know, which which, which pleased me, actually, that it, the whole movie was not like the same. I felt, you know, that a lot of credit goes to Robert Altman, you know, because it, because it did. Because I learned from him, you know, how to use the zoom lens also, because before that I hardly ever used the zoom for creative purposes, because I thought that it's bad to use a zoom lens. And, but he showed me how to use the zoom lens by moving the dolly at the same time and zoom at the same time, and you hide the whole thing. So I learned a lot, actually, from him. And, uh, and on my next picture, what I did with him, you know, images, uh, where we actually didn't really flash the film as much. And then when we did the long goodbye, we moved the camera all the time, sideways, dolling sideways, back and forth, and uh, going up on the, on the dolly, up and down, up and down on the dolly, zooming in, zooming out. So we use all kind of camera movements which is possible to do. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I didn't like that technique, you know, I still don't like it. But one really great thing is at the moment you move the camera, it gives you an, an incredible third dimension in a movie. And, and you know, you create a third dimension with lights most of the time, you know? Because, you know, we are shooting still two dimensions. The third dimension has to be created like the painters create, you know, with lighting, with, uh, with uh, fogging the background up a little bit, and, and you know, all, all those things. And, but when you move the camera, suddenly you have depth because you are relating things which are in the foreground things which are in the middle and things which are far away. They all, you know, show depth. Well, Altman is, is really, you know, a, a, a genius when it comes down to filmmaking. And he is also open. If I saw something, you know, and I would suggest something, 
he would immediately take it, you know, without thinking about if it's right or wrong, because he, he's clever enough to realize, you know, that, oh yeah, that's great. And the guy, you know, listens to everybody, actors, crew members. He, he knows, you know, that uh, making a film is sometimes is a community effort, you know, everybody can, can add to it, you know, everybody, no matter what, what position your film is, you can add to the movie. It's, it's hard, you know, to say that what I did and what he did and this, because we did it together and I never tried to, you know, make points that it was my idea or his idea because it all blended together. It all blended together and then I, today I won't remember which was my idea, which was his idea. And that's the way I like to work, actually. That's the way it's the best when everybody works together and not try to make a macho thing about it, that that was my idea, that was your idea. What difference it makes? The movie speaks for itself.